television and the courts. How judges and juries and uh, lawyers and parties interact. It's something about which I think many Americans, in fact, most Americans know very little. So the obvious goal of the project is to inform and to educate. And that is a very worthwhile goal, and it is for that reason that the Chief Justice of the United States and the Judicial Conference approved this pilot or experimental program in three districts. The presence of the camera in courtroom, and we will have only one television camera, they will operate as a pool, in my judgment, should not change the way the case is tried at all. I've watched you during the course of the trial, and you've been most attentive, even during the very technical testimony from bacteriolo bacteriologists and uh, chemists, you've been most attentive. You, in my judgment, you could not be any more attentive. And the case has been well tried, although you heard me tell counsel, I want them to try it a little faster. We seem to be dragging a little bit. So all in all, I do not believe the presence of the camera in the courtroom will impact on the way the case is tried. But I think it will have the advantage that I, I addressed earlier. Hopefully people will be watching when this uh, tape is, uh, is broadcast and it will tell them something about the way cases are tried in the United States District Courts. Now I can tell you just one other thing. This is a program that is being utilized in only civil cases. Criminal cases are not part of this experimental program. We'll see how it works. I'm expressing no opinions now. I hope it works well, but we'll see. And I think uh, this uh, camera in this court is also tell you, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, that you will not be found uh, part of our uh, uh, guidelines. And we have guidelines uh, covering the, uh, the project. The, guard, the guidelines provide that the jurors will not be filmed, so you will not see yourselves on the television. Uh, and if you uh, uh, heard my instructions uh, about not watching uh, television that deals with the case, and not reading anything in a newspaper that deals with the case, and not listening to anything on radio that deals with the case, I will add to those instructions now. Uh, you're not to watch any cable TV or any other television that deals with the case. You can certainly see what was going on in, in the courtroom as you witnessed it. But I think the televised proceedings will be laced with comments. There will be comments uh, from uh, the people covering uh, the, uh, the trial. And for that reason, at least until the trial is over, you are not to watch anything, although now it might be a little more tempting. You are not to watch television uh, that deals with the trial. I see some of you <laughs> saying, oh, shucks, uh, but you're not to watch it. I don't know whether it will be on television, but if we are, that's an important instruction. Uh, you're not to watch it. With that, uh, Carl Petro, uh, president of the uh, plaintiff companies, was on the witness stand for further I guess it was redirected. And Mr. Petro, will you return to the stand? May I proceed, Your Honor? You may. Petro. Good morning, members of the jury. <clears throat> you had been asked some questions, Mr. Petro, in your uh, cross-examination about a complaint that was received from the Krishaks. Do you recall that testimony? <clears throat> yes, I do. And can you look at Plaintiff's Exhibit 86A? That's in front of you. I believe that's a FDA report along with a letter from Pocono dated November 8th.
Do you have that, Mr. Petro? <coughs> yes, I do. Okay. And uh, I believe, uh, I don't remember whether it was Mr. Kelly or Mr. Emery had pointed you to um, page one where it noted that Mr. Krishak said that the water smelled like gasoline. Do you see that? <coughs> yes. Can you read the next sentence, please? Upon investigation on 11-188, it appeared to smell like mothballs. And who wrote that notation? That was by the uh, DER field investigator. And turn to the second page. <clears throat> and under the notation where it says additional lab analysis, can you read that, please? Only for gasoline or petroleum distillate, possible mothballs. Okay, and what was the FDA's finding as a result of their investigation? Your Honor, I'm going to object. It's not the FDA. The DER. <clears throat> there was a reading of 0.36 ppm uh, of naphthalene. Okay. And where is that ingredient found? It's found in mothballs. Okay. And uh, do you know where the Krishaks stored the water about which they were complaining? Uh, in their closet. And was there anything else in that closet? Uh, Objection, Your Honor. This isn't in the report. This has to be hearsay. I'm going to sustain that unless there's some independent basis for the witness's knowledge. If there is. What's if he, for example, inspected the uh, the Krishak's closet and noted the location uh, of the water and the presence of North Poles, that would be permitted. Uh, but as you know, counsel, hearsay testimony is not permitted under the rules of evidence. Yes, Your Honor. How, how do you know? What was in Krishak's closet, Mr. Petro? When we delivered uh, some complimentary product there, uh, there was a note of mothballs. Your Honor, I'm going to object to move to strike unless Mr. Petro was the one who uh, delivered this. It matters not that a, a Pocono uh, driver or another driver employed by Pocono might have made the delivery. If Mr. Petro has first-hand knowledge, he can testify on that subject. Otherwise, his testimony on this subject is, listed, is limited to the report of the DER, which is already in evidence. What is the... Do you have first-hand knowledge of that, Mr. Petro? Uh, it was reported to me. By? Uh, by one of our drivers. Uh, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I'm going to strike that testimony regarding the uh, 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 placing of Pocono water bottles in uh, the closet and the presence of mothballs or uh, whatever in the, in the closet. As I told you time and time again during the trial, the federal, rule of evidence, the federal rules of evidence control what evidence is introduced in this trial. And the only way Mr. Petro knows of the location of the water is through hearsay, through the testimony of one of his drivers. If the plaintiff believes that it is important to introduce this evidence to you, they will have to call the driver. So I'm going to ask that you strike this from your consideration. If you do not consider this evidence in your uh, deliberations of the case. As I told you before, the reason you must do this is because that is the fair and proper thing to do in our instruction, not to consider uh, the proximity or the, uh, the relationship between uh, the storage of water and closets and whatever else might have been the closets. And the, the premises of the, the, the name of these people, the Krujaks? Krishaks. Krishaks. Did the DER find any source of the naphthalene at Pocono's bottling plant? They did not. And did they note that on their records? Yes, they did. <clears throat> did they find any problems with the plant at the time they inspected? Mm, they did not. And did they note that on their records? Yes, they did. Let me refer you to Occidental Exhibit 131, which I think should be up there. Uh, Mr. Emery was questioning you about these. These were bacteriological results <coughs> that Pocono had done from... For right now, we'll leave our live coverage from the U.S. District Court for the Eastern District of Pennsylvania, but we'll be back as the day continues here on C-SPAN. William Moffitt, an attorney and also representing the National Association of Criminal Defense Lawyers. This is the first day of the three-year experiment on cameras in the federal courts. Your thoughts? Well, I think as, as, as an American citizen,